Hello, welcome to my channel and happy Easter if you celebrate Easter or some of my friends, Ostara, you know what it is. I am Mayor, this is Nightmare Bliss and I'm doing something totally different today. I'm very excited. I mentioned that I've been a painter and an artist my whole life. I've always done that. It's a huge part of who I am and it also inspired me to get into makeup. I'm a retired makeup artist, esthetician, nail tech, and hairstylist and now I live in the middle of nowhere up on a mountain where I do all that for YouTube and it's so much more fun. And when I was challenged to do an Easter look from some friends, I I immediately thought everybody's doing, you know, bunnies, Eastery colors, spring colors, pastels. You know me. I do something different. If you can't tell by the bone structure and the pale skin, I am Polish and Russian. My grandmother, who I am the most like, I would say, is my dad's mother, Taffy. Taffy, if you saw last Tuesday's No Tag Tuesday questions, Taffy Tafilia was my grandmother on my dad's side and Auguste grandfather on my dad's side. My grandmother spoke Lithuanian, Polish, and I believe Russian, and she was a crazy woman. I'm sure that's where I get my wackadunas from and all my a lot of my cooking skills, they come from my grandmother's, especially her. She would have me in her kitchen as a toddler. She would put me up on a booster and she was making borscht and all these crazy recipes that as a toddler, you're like, beet soup, duck's blood soup. <gasps> uh, oh my God. Nothing I was interested in. She was still an awesome person and she was an avid gardener. Her entire backyard looked like the Garden of Eden. It was like my happy place as a child and what influenced me as a gardener. Being artistic in my family, my grandmothers knew about, most people know them as Ukrainian eggs or pisanki, P-Y-S-A-N-K-Y. That's what I'm gonna talk about today. This is what influenced my Easter design for today. These are painted eggs, but these are wooden. My grandmother, Taffy, gave me these when I was a child, and I have kept them my whole life. They are some of my prized possessions. I grew up with these. These are probably going to my grave with me. I Actually, I'll probably give them to one of my great grand nieces, whatever, something like that. They will probably be passed down in my family. A lot of people know about, uh, well, we say pisanki in Polish, but pisanka in Ukrainian are the painted eggs. And I'm gonna show you ones that I actually made. This was inspired by these eggs, and this design was actually inspired by eggs that I personally designed that you'll see at the end of this video. Buckle in. I don't know how this is going to go, but we're going to try it out. Here we go. My brother Jim started doing it first. When I was a kid, I was, mm, I want to say preteen, my brother Jim started doing it because my grandmother and my grandparents knew how to do this. I'm not sure which ones did it, but I think it was um, my grandmother on my dad's side and possibly my mom's mom. They were into the Polish pisanki. Now, a lot of people don't know that the Ukrainian eggs are also a Polish thing. People think of them as the Ukrainian Easter eggs, but they are very, very big in Poland. Obviously, sharing that border, my grandmother was very into all the Ukrainian things. A lot of the food, a lot of the cultural things are shared. I'm not sure if I have family before that from Ukraine. I've never actually looked back that far. It was impossible for me to trace my family tree, but my mom's side, we have it all the way back goes way back in Poland. There's some great stories on that side. On my dad's side, it was very difficult, mostly because of Russia. I couldn't get any information. It was impossible to find anything out about my grandfather. You know, there's no records. I had no records of his family. I took my niece, Kate, to, there's a big Polish cultural center where I grew up. And they had this special thing going on. I can't believe I saved this. Now, Ukrainian, it's spelled P-Y-S-A-N-K-Y. And here are some of the Ukrainian designs. And you can look this up online, but it, all of the symbols on here, they actually have meanings on these eggs. So there's different cross hatches, there's wheat sheaves, there's different motifs. They call them motifs. A grapevine is good fruits of the Christian life, birds, fertility, and for fulfillment of wishes. So these aren't just pretty things. They were actually almost like filled with little magical symbols. And interestingly, as in a lot of the Christian stuff, a lot of these were pagan symbols. The wheat sheaf, the deer, the grapevine, and the you see a lot of spirals and things. This is spelled differently. This is P-I-S-A-N-K-I, and these are the Polish motifs. The Polish motifs, if you look at the Polish and the Ukrainian, okay, here's some of the Ukrainian. They tend to be a lot fancier. The Polish are a lot simpler. The Polish motifs are very simplified. I kind of like that about them. They're kind of minimalist. They're minimalist. Again, here's Ukrainian, and you see all the detail. Tons of detail. Lots of little details. Polish. Much simpler. 
basic designs. I love the Ukrainian ones. I really appreciate the work that's put into them. I took my niece Kate to this so she could learn. That was my way of passing this down to one of my nieces. Marsha Lewandowski did this. And if you look at the date, Saturday, April 11th, 1992. This is when I took my niece Kate to do this free admission. They give you all the equipment. I'm not going to tell you how to make these in this video. That's not what this is about. This is what inspired my Easter makeup look because I grew up with these and I wanted to do something Easter that was really me. We went to this workshop though and I do have the eggs that I made in that workshop. I'm going to show you later. I have a whole plate of pisanki that I've actually made myself. Many of them from the 1990s. There's a couple from the 19, late 1980s. My brother started making them as like a, a teen, early 20s. That's when I started making them. And then I introduced them to my niece, Kate, and she started making them. These are Marsha Lewandowski compiled these who did the class. Each of these designs comes from a different region of Poland. I'm sure that the ones that are more intense are, pro I haven't researched this. They're probably closer to Ukraine. These are all from different areas. So we have, I wish my Polish speaking family was still here, but it's K R Z C Z O N O W Lublin and Podlowski is P O D L A S I E and Opacno is O P O C Z N O. Oh, Opacno. Okay, so this is interesting. She did put notes on the side. Opacno Pisanki are two color eggs. That is, all of the designs are drawn in a white or brown egg and then dyed a single color. Lublin Pisanki use a lot of white lines, yellow, orange, and red zigzags with some blue on a dark background, generally black or green. Spiral shapes are red, orange, or yellow for the most part. She has the pronunciation Cho Kachonuf Pisanki. Kachonuf. Kachonuf. So K R Z C Z O N O W is Kachonuf Pisanki is a dark background, black or brown, best to set up the colors of Kchonuf Pisanki. Major divisions are white, flower star patterns in red, green, orange, or yellow, leaf or tree forms, green and other designs may be blue, red, or green. So they're very specific to the regions. So even on these small ones that we have, it says, you know, the last step is melt off the wax to reveal six, a six color egg from the region of Lublin. It is a very, very intensive thing to do, but it's so fun and it's it takes a long time. I spent a lot of time making these, but I absolutely love them. Here we are, finished look, and some of the eggs that inspired it. Originally, I was inspired by the ones my grandmother gave me. These are all the eggs I made. The three in the middle, those are the ones that I did in 1992 in my class. This one right here is probably the oldest one I have. I did this one in, um, oh, when did I do this guy? I wanna say about 1989 or 1990. The other ones I did later than that. And these have been with me my whole life, as has this hat. I'm calling this video honoring my heritage on Easter because I grew up with Easter being a very important part of our family. Grandma, thank you for the eggs. And this, this is my grandmother's hat. Yes, Grandma Taffy. This was one of her crazy hats. In case you're wondering where I get the crazy hat thing from. I love this because this is kind of honoring me being a little gothy, a little spooky with the eye look and bringing Ukrainian and Polish eggs into it. I am looking a little crazy. Too bad everything's closed today. I would go out wearing this look. I kind of have a Julia Fox eye going. Actually, Julia Fox did an Instagram story on how to do her crazy eye. Well, this is basically it. It's really easy, you guys. You saw me do it. It's really easy. Julia Fox eye, I was wearing that in like 1984. It was the goth girl eye, okay? We did this every day when we went out. 
it is not that deep. I am crazy Polish Russian. I hope you enjoyed this. This was just a little bit of history about the eggs that you see. If you want to do more research on them, I'll put a couple links below. There are tons of different kinds. There's super intricate designs. There's more simple designs. I tend to stick with the Polish designs. I like the simplicity of them and the minimalism. So what this is, this was a brown egg, okay? The, I did not paint brown on black. This was a brown egg and I did a wax resist. So you melt the wax. Oh, I have one last thing I wanna show you. This is the stylist. And basically what you do is you pick up wax in this side and the wax comes out this side. This particular one right here has been in my family since my grandmother. This is very, very old. And this is like the second oldest one, I think. This one and this one are the two oldest. This poor thing, you could tell it has been around for over 40 or 50 years. I've taken really good care of it. And this is like a more modern one. I always use these when I do my eggs. I always go back to these. I don't know if it's just because it was something that was handed down or what, but my brother Jim, I believe, got this from my grandmother or someone and I ended up with it, which is great. It kind of was just in our house at my mom's house. So I think I, I didn't really get it so much as my brother Jim moved out and I grabbed it. I'm looking forward to getting back to doing art, as I said, and crafts. I know it looks weird with my glasses, but here is my crazy egg inspired eye. This egg right here is one of my favorites I've ever made. And this was really kind of my inspiration for this eye. Some of the designs on this egg. Now you see it, right? It didn't come out exactly how I wanted it to. I do want to try and do this again in the future and do more eye art, but I want to use different things and I'm trying to see what works and what doesn't. Always try in the back of your hand. Anyway, happy Ostara or Easter or whatever you celebrate. It is the beginning of spring. Let's have a good one and be kind to each other. Also, I am going to drop down in the description, a couple of links to if you want to help Ukraine at all, donations or anything. Not you know, do what you want to do. That is my heritage. My family is all from that region. So it has been just really devastating for me to see what's going on there. I do want to mention too, lastly, my jewelry was a gift and it was made especially for me from Sanitz, one of my friends. She made all of this for me and it really matches the hat and the whole vibe going on. I love it. Thank you, Senates, for the jewelry. Thank you for watching. I hope you all had a great weekend. I will see you this week with less crazy looks. Maybe not as artsy, but we'll still have fun. Thanks a lot. Bye.